Search engine optimization or SEO is about getting your website ranking on the organic listings on Google. We're not talking about the Google ads paid listings at the top. We're not even talking about having you on the map listings, although that's equally important and that might be covered later on in this video. We are talking about organic placings where you are sorted and organized by Google based on the performance of your website. Don't want to scare you, but Google has over 220 ranking signals. These are methods of ranking your website compared to others. So let's just use an example. You have a construction firm. Your local town happens to be the same as my local town, Bill Wells. So therefore, you are going to say, I want to rank on top of Google in the organic listings for construction company in Bill Wells, building firm in Bill Wells. This is what this video is about, is showing how to start out that process, how we can build up momentum and get you there in a realistic time frame, as opposed to what others potentially do and saying there's a really easy, quick, lazy way of getting you there. The short answer is there's not. Mistake number one is blame your website platform. Time and time again, I've heard people saying, oh, you should not be using Squarespace if you want to rank on Google. You shouldn't be using Wix. You should be using WordPress with all of the SEO plugins that are available. And I will say, in 99% of the cases, even 99.9%, .9%, that's utter rubbish. The platform might have slight differences in terms of page load speed and giving Google more information about what's on the website, but it's certainly not the most important area. And if you end up going round in circles and changing your platform based on this type of ill-advised advice, then you're never going to get your website finished. And also, you just can't get on with the rest of your workload. I'm a Squarespace authorized trainer, Squarespace specialist. It's my favorite platform. However, I've worked on Wix, on WordPress, and they're absolutely fine. It's personal taste, and it doesn't really matter when it comes to SEO. So that's the good news there. Don't get caught up in the discussions about which platform's better. The only time that it really matters is if you're going after some of the big players and you're selling 10 to 20,000 products online, or you're looking to turn over millions of pounds turnover within a few months. I'm guessing that you're not in that bracket, at least not yet. To summarize with this point, the platform can make a difference, but it's so small that it only matters to SEO agencies who are charging a lot of money to get companies ranking on Google or large companies who have a team in-house who are constantly looking at improving the rankings of their website. For everyone else, it really doesn't matter. If you want an instant 20% discount from your first monthly or annual Squarespace plan, we have left instructions in the description. It is both quick and easy to claim your discount at any time of the year. Enjoy. Point two, looking for shortcuts. And I'm a sucker for this as well. When I see something and think, oh, that could get us there much quicker, I can't help myself but just to dive in. A more cohesive strategy is to confront the brutal facts in terms of it's going to take time and it depends on the industry you're in. If you're in a niche, you can get where you need to be within one to three months. I would say a construction firm in Bilth Wells is relatively competitive, but it's also enough of a niche that there may only be five or six direct competitors for that area. With a few months of work, and depending on how the other websites are performed and whether they're spending any time on SEO, because if you have competitors who are all spending time adding blog posts, ranking the website, you end up with this keeping up with the Joneses or one-upmanship that raises the level of competition for everyone. But here we're talking about looking for shortcuts, buying backlinks from sources that you have no idea about. They can help but ultimately you're not building your website on a solid foundation. To summarize with this point, it's tough. It's about getting into a rhythm. It's about making sure that we are adding to our website. We are building on it day after day, month after month. So we have that consistency, which brings us seamlessly on to our next point of failure, failing at the flywheel. What on earth do I mean by a flywheel? Well, if you, like me, are a big fan of the work of Jim Collins, you will already know what I mean by that. For the rest of you, the flywheel is a model used by Jim Collins and famously rolled out by Amazon with their own famous flywheel model. The point of the flywheel is you don't get success instantly. It's about building up momentum over time. So let's just say we have an aim at the top here to build more houses in Mid Wales, where Built Wales is based. So that sits at the top of the flywheel. We then 
go to the next point of the flywheel where we are looking to target potential customers in that area. In this segment of the flywheel, we're looking at domestic customers. We're looking at architect firms and surveyors, and we're looking potentially at public sector or large home builders. So we've identified who our audience is, and that's our next point of the flywheel is to build that up. Then we need to reach them. So we're building our megaphone for our company. There's an analogy I've nicked from Simon Sinek. And we're trying to reach those people. And that's where the website comes in, an integral part of our flywheel. We then look at how we can engage and respond to customers when they find us via our website. And then finally, we complete the sale, we complete the project, and we're back up to the top of the flywheel and we're ready to go again. That first rotation of the flywheel is slow. It's laborious. It can take years to turn it. But as we build up momentum bit by bit, our processes improve, our website becomes more effective to reach and to speak to those customers. And if it all clicks into place perfectly, we end up with a synergy between our website selling and our service offering and our actual ability to get the job done marrying together and delivering a great result. That's the theory anyway. It's not always as straightforward as that. By failing at the flyer wheel, you're not thinking of the website as an important cog in an overall machine where you are trying to increase your sales, whether it's through a service, through a product, or through a large project. Our fourth point is chasing trends. You may have created a blog for your website. Blog is one of the best ways of building up an audience over time. It's a great way of ranking, especially if you're looking at regional results where you would put a blog, which maybe covers, in this case, case studies. So we have a blog or a diary showing projects that this construction company has worked on over the past X number of years. The biggest mistake that people make with this is they will chase that as a trend and thinking, I need a blog for my website. I also need to be seen to be at the cutting edge of my industry. So I'm going to create a blog and a YouTube channel to help people with problems with their homes so that they can come to us and we position ourselves as the experts in our field. All great stuff. But problem with chasing trends is that sometimes you lack the discipline to stick with one. You're far better off adding a blog post every two weeks or every month you could get away with it than to go after a trend where you add five blog posts and you get really into it in the first week. You create five videos to go with those that goes onto your brand new YouTube channel. And then you get busy because you've taken in a large project for your construction firm. And then all of a sudden the website's left to one side. You've chased the trend without identifying your limitations in-house. Do you have a member of the team who really enjoys blogging? Are you doing it yourself in your evenings? If so, that's probably not sustainable, especially if your business becomes successful elsewhere. By making sure you are brutally efficient with your time can save you the problem of creating a monster, a blog that starts off really well and then actually just goes against the rest of your website when it's not updated for 12 months, 18 months, two years. You've all seen them, that website where you just think, if they're not prepared to keep their own website up to date, are they going to be thorough in the job they do for me? Simple as that. And I did say that there would be a bonus point at the end, which would be specific to this fictional business looking at targeting an audience in their local region. And that is Google local listings. That's the map pointer that you find on a Google search results page. Again, if I type in construction company, Mid Wales, not only do we have the opportunity to appear in the organic listings, we can also potentially appear in the map listings. So make sure you get a Google My Business profile. You apply for this through Google via a Google account, funny enough. And then Google will send you a postcard with a code that you can enter in to authenticate your account. Essentially, you're saying, yes, I am where I say I am. Once we've done that, you can then ask former customers to leave a Google review, ideally a five-star review. What we're looking for over time is to build the number of Google reviews in double digits. And then if you can get to 100, 200 Google reviews and you're ranking and averaging at four and a half stars plus, that will come out as a shining beacon on the Google search results page. You will see potentially five golden stars next to your profile. Some of your competitors may not have even noticed this and they may have a disgruntled customer who's left a one or two star review. By putting yourself in that position, by getting the profile set up, not only is it easier for them to find you and you've got another slot for people to find you on Google, the review system is just that flashing beacon on the page saying, this company is good. 
And that's essentially what we're after. These examples I've given today will not take your website from not ranking to being number one on Google, but it will help to build the right type of foundation. So you're starting off on the right footing. If you're prepared for this journey, and I can't tell you how long that will be because it will really depend on your industry sector and the amount of work you put in and also the amount of work your competitors put in on their websites. So hopefully this will point you off in the right direction and help you to avoid the mistakes that I've made in the past and many of our clients have made before we started working with them. If this has helped you, hit the like button, please subscribe, all that jazz. But also I'd be really interested to see if you've got any tips or any things that will work for you in your industry. Please leave a response in the comments. Catch you next time.